All right, folks. We're back in the old engine bay. Um, the talk we do today will be to run through the procedure uh, that I'm employing to fit the front battery box. Now, last night um, had a bit of success here. I uh, just played around with the ECU harness and uh, various sensors and just using the diagnostic software and uh, by just plugging back in the throttle body connecting up my Arduino uh, to provide a tag pulse and a couple of resistors um, there in place of the uh, idle air control valve I've been able to uh, get the DME to uh, come back to life and uh, control the throttle body for me um, and put out two of the three uh, warning lights on the dash being the uh, DSC failure and an EML lamp so they're both gone out uh, which is great uh, I do have a mill lamp uh, that I have to manage to extinguish but um, we'll come back to that at another point so what we're doing is fitting that battery box um, up here uh, between the front chassis rails in the engine compartment now what we may see is that I've got the uh, got the aircon rad back in I can never remember whether this is the condenser or the evaporator so whichever it is it's back in there and I had to go ahead and just chop out a little bit of the um, the brake um, air duct on the two sides there but the battery box fits back in there now perfectly so it'll take up that uh, space so that's not a problem now our battery box as I say fits between the two chassis rails so we need a way to attach it um, to the chassis rails and the method that I've decided to try uh, are these nut certs as you can see I've got two of them um, installed here on the right hand side I've got holes drilled on the left hand side uh, to put in two more the corresponding holes here in the box and uh, I just have to drill those out to about 8.5 clearance hole and these are the little guys uh, we're going to use so just try and run through how they uh, operate afraid it being the bank holiday with uh, not quite a lot of extras going around the place. Anyway, so these are uh, nut certs, and what they basically have is a, a flange and a little serrated um, outside piece here, and then in the bottom there's a thread to whatever size of the actual nut cert that you're going to use. These are actually M8 and if I just take a standard M8 screw you can see that it just treads in and uh, actually comes out the far side if we keep uh, treading it in. So there is a tool uh, for putting these in. Now that one is in its normal uh, state and this one here is one that I was practicing on earlier and the idea here is that when we tread into it like so we want to hold this piece and pull the back forward and that causes it to collapse and form this shoulder here um, which then ultimately grips uh, the metal 
uh, through which it's been inserted. So this is the theory and uh, so far on the two that I have fitted um, it seems to be uh, working out. So there is a tool for doing them that's rather expensive so I came up with a little solution uh, that seems to be working well. What we do um, is we take uh, a short bolt, this is an M8 by 25, and take a standard M8 nut and just drill out the treads of it so that it's just just basically slides over the uh, treads on the bolt. We then come along we have this in our uh, in our piece of material, in this case the chassis of the, the car, where you have to drill a 10.5 hole to uh, accommodate the um, outside size. We then come along and actually screw the bolt into the nut cert until it's all the way in, like so. Do we then come along? And if I have my tools around here, here we go. Put a 13 spanner on the the inside nut, and come along with a 13 uh, socket. And what we do is we just basically uh, tighten that up, and that pulls the back of the nut cert forward and collapses it. Uh, or I should say expands it here and uh, creates the uh, necessary um, tension. Now what we need to do is to make sure as well that if you just try this with a dry nut and bolt all that will actually happen is that when you actually thread it in there and you try to do that it will just spin the whole thing as you uh, try to tension it. So what you do is, just prior to actually uh, actually expanding the thing, just give it a little shot of WD. That just lets it slip on that flat surface there and stops the uh, thing from expanding or from just spinning the uh, actual insert. So we'll go ahead. And I'll try and set up here and uh, in such a way that we can see what I'm going to be actually doing here. My little, uh, I should do this. Trying to find a suitable surface in a car to put a tripod can be a bit tricky. As I'm demonstrating, I'm sure. Here we go. So, I'll go ahead and uh, see if we can install this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, nut cert and we'll need a pliers. And a hammer. And I just got the nut cert here in the actual pliers. Uh, just to hold it in place. I'm just going to tap it in. It's a nice tight fit. to hit it until I get a nice uh, mating on the flat so it's not uh, sticking up or anything silly like that. So then get my famous tool and we just uh, just screw that in. And 13 spanner and 13 socket. Try and do this in such a way you can see it. So I'm putting my spanner on here and socket on the outside. I'm just holding against the rotation. And I can feel a little bit of resistance in the socket arm just as the thing starts to expand. I just keep going. I kind of practiced on a couple of these. You kind of get to know what it feels like when it's expanded fully.
and then that's it. So you got your bolt sitting there. So simply reverse the socket arm. And the thing should just uh, come straight out. And that's it, it's in there. So I'll go ahead and fit the last one off camera. And we'll drop in the box and uh, see if the thing will see if it'll bolt up for us. Okay, so all of our nut certs are now in and they're all tightened up happily. So let's uh, let's drop in the box and uh, see how it fits. looking pretty good. So unfortunately I've only got a couple of brass bolts at the minute but they'll do to uh, just to set the thing up. I'm gonna get some uh, get some 8 by 25 stainless bolts for this job. And uh, Short. Probably use uh, cap headed bolts on this ultimately. Have to see how the cells fit in. Far, quite happy with the nuts art situation anyway. Can't complain about it. battery tray installed with nut certs so we'll actually see how it goes when it's full of cells this tray will actually be ultimately taking uh, 10 cells so we'll just go ahead and grab the couple that I have and see how they actually fit in there and just to round the thing off so there we go guys there's four of the uh, CA180 FI cells installed in our front battery box. All we need is an, another six more to fill that one. And uh, obviously we'll be installing the heating under them, uh, a bit of insulation, that kind of thing. I have a nice polycarbonate cover uh, to go on top as well. Um, so that's it, yeah, I just thought we'd uh, try out those nut starts this evening and um, seems to be going well. So uh, 
think I'll be getting on to Jack for some of his, uh, whatever he uh, settles on a name for it, the cell booty protector cover elastomer material uh, for doing these. And uh, I think it'll be a nice finishing touch. But uh, yeah, quite excited about it. Um, need to get more of these cells in here and uh, get the controller done and She'll be able to uh, take the old land yacht for a bit of a shakedown cruise. Alright folks, uh, hopefully we'll be back soon with uh, some more updates and more cells. Talk to you all soon.